Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to talk to you about the process of tapping. Tapping a hole is the process of creating screw treads on the inside of a drilled hole to enable the screwing in of a bolt or a machine screw. So prior to drilling the hole that you eventually will have to tap, we need to determine what size you need to drill for the bolt you are trying to screw in. So your hole will be smaller than the diameter of the bolt because the treads tapped are going to actually increase the diameter of the hole. So we use a chart to determine the drilling size for each of the machine screws. And we refer to the sizes of the machine screws or bolts as M3, M4, M5, etc. So here I've got an M6 bolt that I'm going to use today for the demonstration. So a general rule to help simplify things in the classroom is that the drill size is generally one size below the tap size. So if you're going to be tapping M6 like we are here today, you would have to drill a diameter 5 hole which is what I have done here. So this is very important because students often see on their work and draw on M6 and they end up drilling the hole 6 when in fact it should be drilled 5 and tapped M6 to fit the, mesh or the M6 bolt or machine screw. So what we do is we must place our tap into the tap holder or stock as it's sometimes referred to. We just use a scriber there to tighten it as tight as we can. Now, to set up here, we place the tap and it must be 90 degrees to the workpiece. So we apply downward pressure and we start to turn clockwise, making sure that you've got a right angle between the tap and the workpiece. We rotate clockwise. So our general rule here now is for every one full turn, we do a half turn back. So we're continuing to apply downward pressure, 90 degrees, and we're doing a full turn and half turn back. So for every full rotation that we make clockwise, we make a half rotation anti-clockwise. So I just say full turn, half turn back. So this is to clear out any swarf from the screw tread. So you're actually cutting away material on the inside of this hole. And if the swarf, or you might know it as, as the dust that comes out, that can end up clogging up the treads, which can then lead to either the workpiece snapping or the tap snapping. So we keep going until the tap has passed fully through the hole and then we rotate it anti-clockwise like this. Rotate it out, just clear away any bits and then we can test the hole and also clear out any bits of swarf by just screwing in our machine screw. Now, so now we've seen how to tap a hole that goes straight through a workpiece, we need to talk about tapping what's called a blind hole. So a blind hole is a hole that does not fully pass through a piece of material. When tapping a blind hole, we must ensure that we've drilled in further than the length of the bolt we plan to use. So this bolt here is M6 by 15 millimeters. So what we would need to do, we would need to drill down around maybe 20 millimeters into our workpiece. So, all the same rules apply to tapping a blind hole that apply to tapping a straight through hole, but the fact that the swarf from cutting the treads needs to fall into the hole makes it a bit more difficult. So this is the reason that we must drill approximately 5mm further than the length of the bolt we plan to use. Here we need to pay extra attention to our full turn and half turn back rule. So again we apply our downward pressure. And we start with our full turn and our half turn back. Full turn, half turn back. And if needed, we must remove the tap fully and clear out the hole. Um, if you find that you're going to have to force the tap or that you hear a funny noise, that's when you, need, you know you need to stop and you need to clear out um, the taps. So, for tapping metal and blind holes in particular, we must use a lubricant. So I tend to use WD-40. So fun fact about WD-40, WD-40 stands for water displacement and it was the 40th formula that they used. So if you're ever out buying it and you come across WD-39, do not buy it because it is useless. Now, so now we've got the lubricant, we can see that it is a lot easier. So this just removes any heat from friction that might be in the workpiece. 
So again, full turn, half turn back. Full turn, half turn back. So once we have it tapped, we again remove the tap by turning it anti-clockwise. Now if I take out the workpiece here, you can see there that the material was in the bottom of the hole. Right, that's the process of tapping. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.